on to EGPS, so a revision session on grammar, punctuation, and spelling today. We did a math session uh, a few days ago about percentages of an amount, but I thought I'd move on to some grammar. Lots of people find it tricky, particularly in my previous year six class. Um, it's so there's so many technical definitions you need to understand. It can become a bit of a minefield. There's so many individual words. It just becomes really, really complex. So here we go. The first session today, we're going to learn about determiners. I've given the definition here, a word that describes a noun or determines which noun, how many of the noun or ownership of the noun. Uh, and as I put obviously below here, it says this isn't particularly clear as it could be mixed up with an adjective. So as with seemingly everything in EGPS in key stage two and beyond, uh, it's about learning what you're being asked. That definition does not make it very clear. Learning that definition isn't very helpful. But once you know what a determiner is, that will make sense. But it wouldn't make sense to a student trying to learn it first thing over. So as ever, I do have Mr. Biddle's memorable line. So for every single topic, whether that's um, in mathematics or anything to do with English writing or reading comprehension, I try to have a memorable line so that any topic that you start, you can think, oh, yeah, that's the one with blah, blah, blah. So with determiners, it's the one about the dog in the playground. So I'll give you the dog in the playground example. Every time you get a question about a determiner, hopefully you'll now think, oh yeah, that's the one where Mr. Biddle talks about dog in the playground. I will give you some examples. So the definitions we gave it was a determiner is a word that describes a noun or determines which noun, how many, or the ownership of a noun. Now to go to my dog in the playground example, there are different types of determiner. Uh, one type is called an article, a dog in the playground. So there is a dog in the playground. We're going to show how by just changing the determiner, it completely changes, almost completely changes the meaning of the sentence. Now, if I was to say to one of the children or you, there's a dog in the playground, that is from working in a primary school for five or six years, that is hugely exciting. That is massively exciting. A dog in the playground is a huge event in any playground uh, in any school in the country. Um, but if I just change the determiner, still an article here, as it's defined, you don't necessarily need to know these subheadings. If I said the dog is in the playground, now that suggests that we know which dog we're talking about. A dog in the playground, random dog, the dog, maybe it's a school dog. So actually just say, oh yeah, the dog's in the playground. Maybe less exciting, still obviously very exciting. Uh, demonstrative is another type of determiner. Again, you don't need to know these subheadings. You don't need to know it's demonstrative. But just think, well, that dog is in the playground. This dog is in the playground. It's almost like you're demonstrating which dog you're talking about. That dog is in the playground. Again, hugely exciting. We're demonstrating now which dog we are talking about. Even more exciting, if it could get more exciting, is a possessive determiner, is your dog is in the playground. Now, that could become, that would come as probably quite a shock. If you have a dog, that would come as a huge shock that your dog, your dog in particular, is in the playground. If you don't have a dog, that will also be very exciting that someone is saying your dog is in the playground, maybe be, being given a gift. Again, the determiner is the only thing changing here. We're still talking about a dog in the playground, but we've talked about a dog, the dog, which we... Um, it's suggested we know that dog we're demonstrating your dog their dog his dog her dog and finally moving into from exciting into worrying 500 dogs in the playground so we can have a quantifier talking about the number of a noun uh, obviously the noun itself doesn't matter but you can see how the determiner only is changing the meaning of the sentence everything from a dog in the playground to 500 dogs in the playground we're not describing the dogs any differently. We're not mentioning any adjectives. We are only changing the determiner. Key things to remember here is that the determiner is always going to come before the noun. So just pick the noun out of a sentence. Again, even if you want to go deeper to a deeper level here, we have playground as a noun, and there's another determ there's another determiner there, the playground. That dog in the playground. Again, so we've got determiners there, and we've got a determiner there. You'll notice <coughs> always comes before the noun. And if to move on to SATs questions, these it doesn't take up too many marks in an EGPS, a grammar, punctuation, spelling test, but they're easy marks to get if we can remember that. So when we come across a question, a SATs question, 
we can have a look at the what we've been asked to do. So circle, we've got to remember that actually circle them, the three determiners in the sentence below. So the way I'd approach it is I would be, I'd quickly look at the sentence, I would highlight to myself where the nouns are. So I've got cereal as a noun, house as a noun, because it's a person, place or thing, and cornflakes. Now that's step one, but that's not what we've been asked to do. We found the noun, but we now need to circle the determiners. So any cereal, the house, that's the determiner, determines which one we're talking about, some cornflakes. Again, quantifier, an amount. So again, it's working before the noun, cereal, any cereal, house, the house. Again, this is a suggestion that we know which house we're talking about, some cornflakes, a quantity of cornflakes. Question 50 on a different paper here, circle the two determiners in the sentence below. So, train, an hour. So just because it isn't a tangible thing you can touch doesn't mean it isn't a noun, it's a person, place or a thing. So in an hour, so one hour, quantity, we get an hour train, possessive element to that as well. So you look, look at the noun and basically the word before it. So hopefully that's explained what a determiner is. Hopefully, whenever you need to remember a determiner, you will say, oh yeah, that's Mr. Vidder or that guy on YouTube um, when he talks about the dog in the playground and how it changes. Go through them all again, very, very briefly. You can have an article, which is a dog in the playground or the dog in the playground. Demonstrative, where you're demonstrating, oh, that dog or this dog is in the playground. Possessive type of determiner is your dog, their dog, his dog, her dog is in the playground. And a quantifier is talking about the quantity as well, 500 dogs in the playground. All very exciting stuff. Uh, hopefully that gives you a bit of a better understanding of the determiner of determiners. As with my um, mathematics revision video, please actually send a comment, like, subscribe, tell me what you'd want to know about, because otherwise I'm going to be picking out individual topics which may not be useful to you. I'd, I'd much rather actually target something which everybody would find much more useful, something you find tricky. That could be in the realm of grammar, punctuation, and spelling, could be maths, could be reading comprehension. You tell me and I'll make a video. See you soon.